Hello to you all, I'm Nareet Ben, and welcome to Improvate's third international conference. It's a space for creating long-lasting connections, allowing change makers in technology and decision makers in government to make progress through innovation. Improvate is all about finding solutions and sparking collaborations that improve the quality of life for people around the world. Today, linking between Israel and Africa in a field that has everything to do with a sustainable future, agriculture. Throughout this special broadcast, we'll be hearing from ministers and ambassadors from Tanzania to Ethiopia, Gabon, South Sudan, Kenya, Angola, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Also with us today, executives from African organizations and food companies from Eat Fresh to the Clinton Development Initiative and the Baula Seed Company. And of course, a key pillar of all these conferences, we'll be hearing from 10 of Israel's leading agritech companies presenting tech solutions to help address major pressing challenges across Africa. Taking part today, Motis, Home Biogas, Kalant, Haifa Group, Metzer, ISM, Davik, the Volcani Center, Saffron Tech, and Agrigo. And as always, watching along with us are representatives of investment funds from around the world looking to invest in Israeli innovation. And starting us off right here in the studio, Improvate's founder and chairman, Irina Nevzlin, along with Dr. Alejandro Marabi. He is part of PepsiCo's external innovation global team, leading agritech solutions, as well as processing and ingredients-related initiatives. He'll be here listening to the range of African and Israeli innovators we'll hear from and looking out for potential investments. Especially important across mm -hmm. Africa, where rainfall can be limited, Israel's Metzer was founded in 1973. They are one of the world's first drip irrigation companies. They're also the only one still completely owned by a kibbutz. Take a look. Dova Vital is Metzer's former CEO, and after working in the National Kibbutz Federation for Economic Development and taking part in Israel's support of rural development abroad, he is now in charge of the company's strategic innovation. Dov, thanks so much for being with us. So we just got a little bit of an introduction into Metzer. Tell us, this is kind of one of the key questions, I think, across the board. Can modern, profitable agriculture also be sustainable? Not only can, it must be sustainable. We're not talking here about large equipment farms no, without people as coming from a rural community, we believe 
in the community as a center of rural activity, producing healthy food, sustainable and traceable food for the premium markets, uh, gathering all the resources and working with nature. We are not trying to domesticate or change nature. We're trying to harness nature, the climate, the water, the soil, and the people together for a long term. Communities are invested and think about generations, not the next year profit, and this is sustainable. So how is Metro's approach unique or different in that respect? Well, first of all, we're not talking only about bringing water from point A to point B. As I say, we're trying to use the whole cycle of water. Uh, in a modern house, 92% of the water that enters the house will flow again to the sewer. This is wasted. Water is the most precious resource in, in the earth, and we don't recycle it. Israel recycles more than 85% of the water. We can do it, improve the health of the villages, improve the health of the people, have more, uh, more resources, avoid using chemical fertilizers because this water has a lot of nutrients, and METSER approach integrates all these disciplines into a reliable and sustainable activity. So as we mentioned, you started in a kibbutz, or so owned by a kibbutz. Are your solutions relevant in particular to African conditions? Yes, if you remember that you cannot copy anything, you have to adapt sure. and translate. Something we've already heard a lot yes, today. Yeah. Yes, uh, but uh, Metzer is in a place that we don't have any natural resource of water. So in arid or semi-arid areas, we know how to do profitable agriculture. We know how to harness the community potential, and especially we work with people. And the approach we want to use is to work with people. <coughs> Another thing about Africa, uh, we understand that we have to reduce the operating costs. A fancy system that requires fancy infrastructure and huge maintenance operation costs won't work. We need something that is sturdy, reliable, able to be operated by the local people with the lowest cost and still creating the maximum profit. Tova Vital at Metro, thanks so much for that. We're going to now hear also uh, from some African ambassadors to see what their problems are in their own respective countries. And that is it from Improvate's Israel Africa International Agritech Conference. We've heard today from government officials, local African companies, and from Israel's leading agritech companies about the needs of Kenya, Ethiopia, Gabon, Tanzania, South Sudan, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo, all in this crucial field of agriculture. And as you've heard, Improvate is all about access and connections, exposing Israeli tech leaders and governments to companies around the world to promote businesses whose goal is innovation. The exposure you've seen right here at this conference, that's just the first step. The next, delegations and real business connections. We want to thank you all for taking part and hope this is just the very beginning of doing business together and making technology accessible to all and improving the lives of millions across Africa. And keep an eye out for Improvate's next conference on January 21st from crisis to innovation, creating a new world. We'll be looking at the challenges and opportunities in Europe in exiting finally this global crisis from medicine to transportation to tourism and education. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you then.